In this video, I want to continue our introduction to the Poisson distribution. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and derive the mean of a Poisson distribution. We're going to state its variance as well, and we're going to see how the selection of the parameter lambda actually determines the shape of the Poisson distribution via a MATLAB simulation. We're also going to talk about the circumstances under which we can use a Poisson distribution to approximate a binomial distribution and again, we're going to compare the two using a MATLAB simulation, which you can run for yourself. We're going to finish off by quickly discussing the conjugate prior to a Poisson distribution, which is to assume that lambda is actually gamma distributed. So first of all, how do we derive the mean of a Poisson distribution? So what we're looking for is the expected value of y. Well, seeing as the Poisson distribution is a discrete distribution, we get this just by summing over all the values of y, so y is the, takes on the value 0, 1, 2, 3, up to positive infinity, where y is taking on the sort of positive integers, and we're summing over y times the probability density, so that's just times this thing up here, so y times lambda to the power y times e to the power minus lambda, all divided through by y factorial. And firstly, we can just take the e to the power minus lambda out the sort of summation here because it doesn't contain any y. So this is just e to the power minus lambda. Then if we look at the corresponding terms, the first term here is going to be when y is 0, so that's not going to contribute anything because we're going to have 0 times something which is positive, which is 0. So then if we think about the circumstance where y is equal to 1, this whole numerator then is just going to give lambda and we're going to be dividing through by 1 factorial, and 1 factorial is just 1. So then we just get lambda. So then if we think about the circumstance when y is equal to 2, we're just going to get a lambda squared. And on the top here, we've got 2 times lambda squared divided through by 2 factorial. Well, 2 factorial is just 2, so the 2's cancel, and we're just left with lambda squared. And then what we get for lambda cubed is we get essentially... 3 times lambda cubed divided through by 3 factorial, which is just, well, the 3s are going to cancel on the top and the bottom, and we're just going to be left with 2 factorial. And we could continue up for lambda to the power 4, and by the same reasoning we get lambda to the power 4 divided through by 3 factorial. And we could continue in on uh, forever. Then what we do is we notice that there is a common factor of lambda in all of this, so we can then take lambda out the side of this, so then we get lambda times e to the power minus lambda, and then what we get here is just 1 plus lambda plus lambda squared over 2 factorial plus lambda cubed over 3 factorial, continuing on forever. And then we notice that this thing inside the parenthesis here is again our Taylor series expansion of e to the power lambda. So then we just get lambda times e to the power minus lambda times e to the power lambda and hence the minus lambda and the lambda cancel with one another, and we're left with this process just having a mean of lambda. So that now proves that lambda is the sort of rate of, or the mean rate of occurrence of events which we're counting. How about its variance? Well, you can go about proving this in exactly the same way, and it turns out that the variance of the count is also lambda. So the Poisson distribution is only appropriate in circumstances where the mean and the variance are very similar. If the variance is greater than mean, so we've got a sort of over-dispersed data, then it might be more adequate to use something which we're going to call here a negative binomial distribution. And we're going to discuss that distribution in the future, but just so you sort of heard about it, in circumstances when the variance is greater than the mean, we might want to use the negative binomial distribution. Then what we can do is we can actually draw what this probability mass function actually looks like. And remember that we're talking about discrete values of y here. And what we're going to be sort of plotting is the corresponding value of the probability mass function, which is given by this function up here, as we change y. And we expect to see something which goes up and sort of peaks and then sort of comes down as we're sort of increasing y. And note that essentially what's happening here is we don't have a continuum of values here as we would with a continuous probability distribution. We've only got the discrete values which correspond to the particular values of y. 
And we expect that the mean of this distribution should have a mean which is close to the value of lambda that we choose and its variance is also close to the value of lambda which we choose. So I've created a MATLAB simulation here which actually creates a Poisson distribution and it actually graphically displays the probability mass function. So what we're starting out with is we're starting out with assuming that lambda here is equal to 10. And what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to go through and I'm going to calculate the mean and the variance which this distribution implies when we take the first sort of 100 positive integers. So if we graph this, we expect that it's going to be peaked somewhere near 10. It's not going to be exactly 10 because 10, remember, is the mean, not the mode. But if we draw this, then we can see here that for the probability mass function, the peak actually corresponds pretty closely to 10. And remember that this is a discrete distribution. So really what we should only be looking at are the sort of blue crosses here or the blue blobs, which correspond to the sort of height of the probability mass function at those integer values of the sort of count of events. So here we see that we've got a theoretical mean, which should be 10, and a theoretical variance, which should also be 10. And that actually corresponds very closely to the actual mean and variance which we've calculated using this distribution. We could then see if we were to decrease the value of lambda, let's say 5, we should expect that this distribution now shifts over to be peaked somewhere near to 5. So if we rerun that, we see exactly this. So again, the distribution has kind of shifted such that its main support is now around 5. I now want to talk about the circumstances under which it is appropriate to approximate a binomial distribution via a Poisson distribution. So we're going to assume that x is binomially distributed with a sort of total number of cases being n and the probability of set success here just being p. And we know for the case of when x represents the count of successful events occurring that the binomial distribution says that the probability that x is equal to a particular sort of count value k is actually equal to, if we sort of write it below, it's n sort of k where this notation really means ncr and then it's just simply p to the power k times 1 minus p to the power n minus k. And the sort of problem with the binomial distribution is that when we actually have sort of large values of n, relatively large values of k, this sort of term here can be difficult to actually calculate, especially by hand. And it actually turns out that we can use the Poisson distribution in many circumstances to approximate a binomial distribution if certain criteria are satisfied. And those criteria are that n is itself quite a large number, so the number, sort of total number of trials is a large number, and that the probability of success is itself a very small number. In those circumstances, we can actually approximate x here by a Poisson distribution, which has got a value of lambda, which is actually equal to n times p. And I'm not going to provide a proof of this, as the proof is actually quite involved, but what I want to do is I want to actually graphically show that the Poisson distribution does actually provide a very adequate approximation to the binomial distribution when these two criteria are satisfied. So what I've done here is I've actually coded up a MATLAB script and the circumstance we're talking about here is when we're talking about a total number of trials being 100 and the sort of probability of its success in any given trial we're assuming to be 0.1. And then I, what I go through and do is I calculate the binomial distribution and which is the sort of true value or the true probabilities and then I approximate that using a Poisson distribution which has got a value of lambda which is equal to n times p which is just what I've sort of stated here in the text. So if we run this then we can see here for the circumstance of when n is 100 and p is 0.1 the Poisson approximation to the binomial sort of exact probabilities is pretty good. And this approximation becomes even better if we decrease the value of p. So if I decrease p by a factor of 2 to 0.5 and then I rerun this, then we actually see that the Poisson approximation is that much closer to the binomial approximation.
And if we decrease the value of p further to let's say 0 0.01 and let's say I increase n up to 1000, so this is now going to have a sort of value of lambda which is 10. If we now rerun this, we see here that the binomial true values are very, very well approximated by the Poisson approximation here. Finally, I want to finish by just stating the conjugate prior for a Poisson distribution. And it turns out, and we're going to prove this in later videos, that assuming a prior on lambda, which is that lambda is what we call gamma distributed with parameters alpha and beta, is actually a conjugate prior to the Poisson distribution. So in those circumstances that we have a gamma prior on lambda and we have a Poisson likelihood, the posterior distribution will itself be a gamma distribution.